Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today is day two, for me at least, of the National Fish and Lure Collectors Club National Meeting in Springfield, Illinois. I'm standing in front of the Boss Center, which is the convention center which holds all of the various collections for both display and sale here. We're gonna head inside, hopefully find some old school gold to buy, as well as some epic antique collections of lures to film. Stick around. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. This is the first ever meeting I've attended at the National Fish and Lure Collectors Club. And I guess it's appropriate, it's the national meeting, the big one. Yesterday we had a pretty good run of room trading, even after hours. And I definitely picked up some pretty cool artifacts from some of the different folks at the show. Well, I've got another empty Plano box that hopefully I will fill up before the end of the day. I only have a few short hours today. I'm gonna to do the best I can to keep this SLR camera on record and show you guys what this thing's all about. I have collected Arbor Gas for over 25 years. So, and I'm pretty knowledgeable in jitterbugs. So who was Fred Arbor Gas? Fred Arbor Gas was a lure inventor. Um, a guy that designed his own lures. He didn't live real long. He died like in 46. Uh, but he started his business in the late 20s. The first jitterbug hit the market in 39. Um, they were all made of wood at that point. And his company continued on. A guy by the name of Dick Cotis became the president. And he ran with the company up to 1997 where they sold out to Pradco. Pradco gave me the rights uh, to publish a book on it. So, What's the name of the book? Jitterbug Collector's Guide. Was the jitterbug the first bait that Fred invented? No, no. He went with metal baits like the Hawaiian Wiggler, the Kicker. Uh, he had a bunch of metal baits out in the t late 20s and through the 30s. And then it was in 39 that he developed, he, he put out the first jitterbug. And that bait's changed over the years, right? It had oh, a plastic yeah. lip for a while. And... Well, it had a plastic lip during the war because metal got scarce and they had to go to the plastic lip. Those were 19, late 1942 to 45. Once the war was over, he went back to metal. Were these five and this one down here. And what they did on these, after, in 1941, after he made wood for 39, 40, and then in 41 he came out with the plastic. And the screws are right on top of each other. They're called inline screws. You can always tell these by the inline screws, the second style hardware, and the fact they have no stencil on the back. Oh, yeah. Because later the screws were staggered a little bit, right? And early they were staggered. But when he made the plastic one, he made them in line. Beautiful. And I, uh, he, he was making an attempt to find out which way the bait worked best with the screws holding the lip in. And today, of course, as you get more modern, they get staggered, like you say. And, wh and why are they staggered? Probably because he felt like that held the hook better and made the bait work better. But you can go back, you can find some where they're almost in line, but they're not quite. I mean, there'll be one almost right under the other one, but it'll be just staggered a little to the side. That and, one's really staggered though, isn't it? Yeah, well, and, and all of them are. Uh, but he, he played around and you can tell that, you know, not all of them are exactly the same. He was tinkering around to find out which way the lip held in best. What about, can I see this one? That that one's neat, the, the yeah. one that's, uh, what is that called? It's called Flock Brown. Let me get one in a box because it's better. 
and I say it's better because it's got the stencil. That one, the stencil is rubbed off. They rub off pretty easily. So this one has the full stencil. <laughs> and it's marked FBR, which means flock brown. It's a 650 series, which is your standard 5 8 ounce. And was this the only color in the frock? No, they made it in black as well. I sold a black one yesterday. They made black, brown. Let me show you a couple others, because these are pretty what cool. What was the philosophy from that? Does it mimic like a mouse or something? Yeah, and I can't tell you, I can't tell you how well that worked. But there's the flock mouse. Uh -huh. I got a couple flock mouse and mice around here somewhere. But anyway, there's one. Oh yeah, 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 right there, nice. And then in the 50s, he made what they called a Gatron or a, I call them fire paints. This one's called Fiery Sunrise. Wow. He, these are called Saturn Greens. These are called Flow Reds. There were three colors. Fiery Sunrise, Flow Red, Saturn Green. So that's Green. a pretty, Pretty wild color. What what inspired him to do that? I don't know, but it is a wild. They are wild colors, but they are easily dirtied and easily go from top collectible down to damaged in a matter of seconds. With did I see that guy? Yeah, that's uh, red winged blackbird. Yeah, that was the first color I ever had. Well, that's a later color. That's an '80s color. It's what yep. they call Sins Bleven yes. series. One of the coolest series they had, they had what? It was the blackbird, the chipmunk, yep, the, the black, mouse, the mouse, the and sparrow, the sparrow, and um, the leopard frogs. Yep. Is that one twenty-two dollars? Said. Yes. Okay. That one's gonna come with. I'll put that in a pile. All right. Which one you want to see? I want to see these. I want to see that chipmunk. Okay. The chipmunk's got a little bit of damage. Yeah. Not bad. But you can see it got rubbed on the top a little bit. That's why it's 17 and not 30. Okay. Now, is that, that lip got bent a little bit too, huh? I guess over the Oh, uh, yeah. You can put a new lip on there. Okay. Well, that's cool. No. Uh, that's, a, that's a neat looking cup. I love those Sands Believings. Yeah. That's my, like my favorite. And here's the mouse. That's another Sands Believing. Ooh. How much is the mouse? What do I have on it? I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. 35 on the... No, no, no. Hang on. Let's see. Where'd you get that? 20. 20 on the mouse. Okay. 20 on the mouse? Yep. yep. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to get the mouse, too. Okay. Um, tell me about these. This is neat. This is called Glitter Ghost. And they made it in five colors. They made it in blue, which is the toughest, red, which is the next toughest. Then you had a copper, <laughs> and then you had a yellow, and then you had the silver. Is the silver the most common? Yes, of the five. That's awesome. Love that. Right, now, here's another one, see? And this one's really cool because they just barely put some silver in that one. They did. Yeah, I mean that's basically a clear with a little bit of silver in it. Is that now is that a different catalog color or just a no, variation? It's just a variation. So those two are the same color. Basically. Wow. Yes. Wow, that is wild. Just how much silver they put in it. I haven't seen this one before. So this is a scene. That's a bleeding. tough that's a tough color. <laughs> it's called flow red on black scale. Yeah. And uh, it's a uh, it's it's a tough color. I How mean, much is that gonna go for? I'd probably let that go for twenty. Really? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. And that's a pretty cool color. That's a very cool color. I like that a lot. No, that's one of them that'll sink and you've got to crank fast. Yep. Okay. So you're a fisherman? Uh so I do a little both. I do a little cast and a little collecting. Kinda okay. depends on the, the baits. So this one I probably won't cast, these I probably will. And what's the name of the bait and who made it? It's uh Mill Sight Daily Double. And like I say, this is a spinning size, and then there's a, one pair of fly rod size. And uh, he, uh, he made earrings out of them. I've got one lady here that's been begging me for those. And I, I told her, I said, no, nah, I'm going to keep them together. But, uh, What's that made out of? Tinat. Uh, Tinat. Uh, is that the patent for the lure itself, too? This is the patent for it, yes. Yeah, I mean, it got me... What's the point of the bait? It's got two different line it's ties. It's got two different, one steep and one shallow. There's several several different ones though. The cobra bait is the same thing. It's got a shallow and a deep side. And uh, just 
you know, the, the closer to the bill it is, the deeper it'll go, and uh, vice versa. And uh, so it's it's just a, a neat bait. Uh, I've got 10 or 12 colors of the big ones, but these belong to a gentleman that collected mill sites. He had the largest collection of bill sites. He had tough, tough colors. These typically are a $10, $15 bait, and common color to big size. But he had some four, five hundred dollars. I mean, he had a huge collection. But we lost him a few years ago. Bigfoot held me. I bought these because me and Bill, Bigfoot was friends, and uh, it was kind of a, re a reminiscence. And I bought these in '18 at Pennsylvania show. Do you have any more really weird baits that are sort of like that? Well, like what is? That one's a weird one, huh? That is definitely similar. a weird one. And I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure exactly 100% what they call that thing, but it it is weird. So look at that. That yeah. almost looks sort of like that. A yeah, little bit. it does. It's it's a very very odd tea trap shape for sure. Yeah, yeah. A little frocked uh, yeah, pool of popper. Yeah, pool of popper. Yeah, yeah. That's like a fifty dollar bag. Okay. And, uh, um, what else is catching my eye here? All right, so. Uh, tough Pe color of the peanut. Yes. So tell me about that one. Uh, cotton cordell. They call it the prez. And um, this one is, is just a tougher color. It's got the, the YY. And it's, it's got. Oh, it does have that. Yeah, yeah, it's got the teeth in the front. It does still have the teeth, but yeah. it's sort of a brown. It's a, it's a, it's a brown. Um, well, we, we just kind of call it a wee wee, but. Uh, let me see if this one. This so that's one, a nice one. And then, oh, you got one in the pack? Yeah, and that's like I say, they call it the Prez. And it's a Jimmy Carter artifact. I've got a bunch of these in the regular color. I've got a golden one. Yeah. But I, I got that one. How much is the uh, this guy? That's like 60 bucks. 60 bucks. In and the, out of the in package? The out of the package, like 35. Wow. That's a, that's a tough one, though. Yeah. That it is, is a tough one. It is. Now, how about this guy? Because this is the common one. That's that, the that common I've seen. one. Yeah, you're looking at twenty bucks. Yeah. That's a cool bait. Have you ever thrown this? No, no. They say it just wiggles. And actually, the Japanese have got one that's a, a miniature of that. It's like one third that size. I've got like ten or twelve of those. Woo! Just and and, uh, <laughs> and then you know all the Cordell baits. Like, like Mark was saying, I've got a huge collection. These are all duplicates for me. But uh, what, uh, what's that color? Is that, that a Japanese color? No, that's actually a, a, a standard color. <laughs> what? And, uh, yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's a variation. This is blue back. And that's black back. Oh my goodness! Wow, I just look at it right there. Holy mackerel! And then this is a green version. That is a wild looking bait. Yeah. How much does that guy go for? That bait's uh, like thirty-five, forty dollars. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a that's a tough one. Ooh, and there's a a green back. That almost looks like well, like a mega bass color or something. Doesn't it, it? It, it's it's getting close. Yeah. And then here's your natural bass. It, it doesn't matter. I'll take care of it. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> hey, well, does that one have a spot toe or a gill spot to gill? You might want to kind this, of point this one out to them if it's not had a... Yeah, this one is, is different too. This is a, a special edition. This is a Japanese color. That's a 2002 special run that they did. Huh. And it was marketed primarily in Japan and Canada. It's got a different sound to it. It has well. got a different rattle. A little higher pitch. Yeah, definitely. It is in Michigan, and that's a plastic one. How old is that bait? Well, these are still being made. Okay. In the plastic. But the wood ones, the lady told me she bought, I, there's a story here with it. Okay. That she bought the company, her and her husband bought the company in 73, and they never made a wooden one. Oh. So, and how... How, when did they start making the original wood? Well, we don't know. We just know it was wasn't after '73, and this came from Arizona. We, Is this we, like a dealer display here? Uh, no, it was some fisherman, and they had those too. We don't even know what those other things are called. The guy told me they they call them a stubby. Uh, yeah, that's some sort of like a three hook jobber. Yeah. And then I guess would they troll that with a weight? Uh, he told me they just use a line and they hand troll it. For what kind of fish? Like salmon? Are they river fish? 
Walleye. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a walleye colors, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, those are very cool. It's crazy colors. I like that. Thank you guys for sharing. Yeah. This is, my, this is my favorite of the bunch. I'll take it out. I mean, these are really, really Is that tough. like a frog pattern of some sort? I even don't know. Look, it's a crackleback. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Ooh, that's a light. It's a nothing to it. That nothing, no weights there, in that bait or anything. Exactly. Just straight up. Yeah. I that's, just thought... That, and this company, the, I talked to the lady. Now she said they have they all they have the bodies are made in China. Okay. And but they paint them, and on their website they currently have 69 colors. That's a lot of. And paint. I said something about this. We have all these colors, yeah. and she said, we've literally changed all our colors, colors every year, and they sell them suckers for 12.99. Wow. How much I, is this guy going for today? Well, we're, we said 10 bucks a piece, three for 25. We, cool. we were going to sell it as a lot, but yeah. nobody's wanted to hold it. Nobody thing. bid on the lot, huh? So I think we're, we're changing our tactic. That's all right. And I think that's worth every penny of 10 bucks or 3 yeah, for 25 for sure. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. James Hedden's first one, he took his wife's broomstick and whittled out a frog. Because he was sitting on the lake one day and just threw a piece of wood out there, and a bass jumped from out of the water and grabbed that wood. So he went home and got a uh, cut a piece of broom handle off and put him out of the frog and put it on the line. And that's where he started making baits in, in uh, 1898. What year did the River Run come out? 32, when it went to plastic. Was there wood before that? Oh, there was wood for years before that. And what yeah. was it called? Was it always called the River Run? Yeah, it's called the River, uh, river Run. And then when it went plastic, it went called Spook. You know, Spook and Head means plastic. It's the number one uh, fishing lure for known, known to uh, be sold in the, of all, all fishing lures is the River Run. It's the number one lure of all time? Yep, of all time. It's like Ambassador's the number one reel. You know, how many river runs have been sold? Have I sold? Have, have been sold? Oh, millions, millions. Of them. I've got thirteen hundred ninety-four of them in my collection. You know, I got, as far as I know, the world's largest collection of river runs. You know, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I've got a, my whole basement's dedicated to fishing. You know, and river runs is my number one, and the head and fly lure is number two. But, but yeah, there's uh, these all boxes are all full of river runs with the correct ones in it. How did you get into, of all the different lures from Hedden, how did you get into river runs? I was collecting all Heddens. I went down from collecting everything to all Hedden. And I was heading to Effingham lure show. And I said, this room's getting so full, I closed my arm like this. I like river runs. I went to the store and bought 119 river runs for that next show. Two weeks later, I went to another show and bought 169 river runs. And it just, within 18 months, I had the largest collection. And how many runs. lures are in your collection now? About 1,394. Yeah, and there's still about 200 more that I know of that I don't have. <laughs> and, uh, do you fish the river runt, and how do you do it? Oh, I fish with river runt. I just, uh, like any other crankbait, you know, usually float to the top, and then you crank them slowly and keep them right down low. Or you can fish them faster and go down, because they got deep dives. You know, there's a deep diver. There's a jointed uh, river runt. Now, floater, if you fish a floater, and instead of sitting flat, he'll sit down with his head down low because he's heavy in the front. And you bring him, he'll go shallow. He won't go very deep, about six to 12 inches deep. And you stop him, he'll float back up and look like a wounded middle. So, you know, that's him. So, float is a good little. So, I never would fish a, uh, a river run you know, for many years. Probably about three years ago was the first time I ever fished one. <laughs> I collect them and sold them, and, and everybody kept saying fish them. So, I took an old beater. And when I turned third cast, I had me a three pound bass. So I still got that picture with on my other phone. I took a picture of my first bass I ever caught, and it was a three pounder of a, a midget a black shore. So if you're collecting them, how do you sell them? Does it, does it pain you to sell some? Or do you just how do you figure oh, yes, out what to sell? It pains me to sell them, yeah. I don't want to sell none of this stuff. I like it. I like buying. No, I do not like selling. And my wife was living, it worked out good. I bought and she sold. I didn't I didn't sell stuff. So uh, what this stuff is for sale? Oh, this every bit of this is for sale. I'm, uh, What's the most expensive, expensive river runt you have for sale today? That one right there. In the middle? Two thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the most expensive. Other than that, I got some fifteen hundred, twelve hundred thousand, but uh, that's the only one. It's two thousand dollars. What's the cheapest river runt you have for sale? Oh, three bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, so they run three bucks to, you know, and I'll probably get some for a dollar, just basically good for the hardware. So at my house, I'll have some dollar ones. What's your favorite river runt color? My favorite, Black Shore. Yeah, it's a it's a common. But my biggest display at home, I got 
two cases this big full of black short. And it's just, you know, of all the black short colors. Now, as far as looking at it, you know, I like, like strawberry spot or, you know, goldfish is a good one. But they're so expensive, it's hard to put a, you know, which you got money to put a goldfish collection together. But, uh, yeah, black short and then yellow short is my second favorite one. But I got a whole wall, I have a picture. It's called nothing but heading. It's all a head. It's called the heading wall, and there's nothing but heading on that whole wall. I think I need to come see your house. <laughs> well, anytime, just give me a call because uh, I just retired in February. It's Duke Pitts. It's for sale. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So well, these that, are for sale too. But so is that going to be a happy day or a sad day? Well, when, when it's going to be a sad day when it's going, oh. I'm about to cry. <laughs> yeah, when it's leaves, I'm about to cry. But, oh. Yeah, these actually, I you know, do because I bought two resale okay. or I upgraded, and they might have been in my collection. And you know, got a little bit better. Well, that one is a wild bait. So, what makes this bait the that scoop is lip? So rare? See the lip the, here, the scoop lip. Oh, it's got a scoop up. Okay. Right. The other is a regular, regular lip. And how? So, what makes it? Why is it so just? Is there, how many of those are there in the world? Well, two's all known to exist, but they was hadn't always made twelve of anything. You you could tell them any color you wanted. They would paint them, make twelve of them, and send them to you. But now only two of them show back up. So, uh, and it's, these are only only made in 1938. There's only made one year. What kind of plastic is that? It's, it's it's, a very... This is called Tintinite One. Uh huh. The thing about Tintinite One is, see how pretty you are today? You come back a week later and they might be smelted down and be nothing but powder. <laughs> well, yeah, well, this one's got a sort of a little warped, right? Is that right. Just... Yep, that's something that's uh, probably started at one time and then it stopped. Okay. But yeah. And wow, now what are they made into? What, what is this era of? Uh, well, if, if they got a nine on them, uh -huh. that's before World War II. Okay. And if they got a zero on them, then it's after World War II. These are 1946. Woo. Yeah. Okay, and then what yeah. if it's just, this is just a newer this one? This is huh? newer ones, yeah. Yeah, the two pieces. So this is pre World War II? Pre World War II, they quit making them in 42, because in 42 they, they quit making it and started oh. making military exactly. parts. I don't want to oh, yeah. Them. Hey, let's put your name there, too. <laughs> we got to get you. Uh, we'll so get I want to see what that thing looks like. Ooh. Yeah, and see, it's $40 with a box. Ooh. It's called Dace. That's got a big hook on it. Yep, about all of them have the same size hook. Now, is this made of tenonite? Yeah, tenonite one. Tenonite one. And after now, World what War II, it's tenonite two. World War II That's tenonite two, which holds oh, together a lot better. I see the better. difference of that. Yeah, the key, you can't see the difference. They're, uh, this is zero. Yeah, but no, you can't see the difference. Ooh, that's but uh, that's a real common bait. See, that's what is that like a white shore minnow? Yeah, or that's some a white sort? shore minnow. I, I'm kind of partial to a black shore minnow. I, uh -huh. so well, I don't know why. Shore, Just something about that black and white. Mm-hmm. Like I say, that's my favorite. I just color love that face. Just such a wild looking face on those mm -hmm. baits. That lip. Right. Wow. Yeah. And the early ones, which I have a few of them. The eyes was way down here. We look almost like as looking straight up. Then it can, and then in, uh, 35 is when they moved the eyes up on the face a little bit more. But see, on 32 they only made the spook and the sinker, and they didn't mark sinker. And 35 is when they come out with a floater. So then they had to mark them sinker and floater. And were these as popular too? Some of these other shapes and stuff. Oh yeah, these is popular. These are all tough colors. There's none of these what you call common. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, they're here. I didn't even bring my common, common stuff. And here's a, a salesman sample of the river run. And that's the way the salesman used to run around and uh, sell them. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And you got just a couple different ones, huh? Oh, yeah. This is one I've, I just made up where I bought different salesman samples and put them on a ring myself. So this is a... I a made. genuine. But well, that one. This is. was genuine here. Yeah. How much does a genuine salesman sample go for? About three to five hundred bucks. That one, you want know, a three hundred fifty is okay. what I want for that one. Because you can get them with four or five in there, and you yeah. get them with different masks. Point how many is on I, there. I love that. That is, that yep. is wild. But uh, and then here at the national shows, I usually, I'll say three hundred. I don't mean about them. Uh, where is that's not you said you had some cheaper ones for sale or is that oh no they're they're home oh they're home i didn't bring my cheap stuff everything here is 25 hours and up okay pretty much except for one of the boxes i got a few in the box i'll sell for 20. a few in the box to sell for 20 nice yeah some real common color like that white shore yeah be a 20 dollar lure even in a box because it's a it's would a, be a good one for me so i want to buy one to fish with well if you like black shore i'd get me a black shore and i will 
I will give you one. <laughs> oh no, we'll <laughs> uh, that'd be a. Uh, we'll do it right. So what's uh? X X. Uh, Black Shore is X B Y. Is this one? No, that's R. That's okay. red. So it'd be a B there. Oh, anything that's got an X here on it is a shore. Okay. That's what the X what means. What color is that? that that's well, that's black and white. Check See, black and white. <laughs> and then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and see, that's a floater. That's one when you stop it, it'll yeah. sit down kind of like this and look like a wounded middle, and then bass come up there and jump it when you fish it. All right, uh, that one's going to come with. We'll, uh, well, you can we'll do the deal on that one. How about tw 20 bucks? Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I appreciate okay, you. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's oh, what right. I fished with. My first river run I fished with was a midget uh, black shore. Well, I've never actually caught a fish on a river run. You haven't? Oh, I've never. Well, yeah, well, I've got too many lures, too little time, so I haven't. Oh, yeah, I, I need to. I got 10,000 lures in my house. So now I'm in. Yeah, thank got, you. I got 10,000 lures in my home. <laughs> All right, Bassin Buds, if you want to help Ed make his river runt collection a little bit smaller, I will drop all of his contact information in the video description, including his cell phone number, and hit him up. If you want to make it bigger, <laughs> send me a picture of what you do have, but I don't. <laughs> or that. So a little status update. If you do ever come to an NFLCC show, y'all better come for a week. Uh, I have been here for several hours now. I've only covered that part of the show and there's still all those tables behind me yet to explore. There is like 0.0% chance I'm gonna get all the way through this today, so I'm going to run around this place, try to find a few more pieces of old school gold before it's time to leave. So pretty good section of some tackle boxes up here. Uh, looks like my old school Umco, and I see three of them that are totally open, and <laughs> I thought I had a lot of lures in my collection. Check this out. So we've got one box here, looks like a bunch of Fred Arbogast type baits. Bunch of them down here in the package. We've got here, looks like mostly head and baits in this one. And look at all those big buds. And then this one is, looks like all Bagley's. And I noticed kind of a theme here. The new in the package stuff is in the bottom of the tackle box. So I see some nice little see and believe-ins. How about this guy, this Fred Arbogast? Five bucks. Five bucks? Nice. Ooh. How about that guy? Tipsy. Yeah. I would guess tipsy. Yep. How much for him? Five bucks. Five bucks, all right. Hold on. I think we found some armor gas to uh, go for here. Oh, so this guy, I guess, just had to replace the. Uh, the skirt on that hula popper. Yep. Red How much for that guy? Ten bucks. Ten bucks for him? All right. Yeah. Yeah. How about for this uh, river run? Two piece hardware, is that? Or? Yeah, two piece. I'll do. Actually, I'll do ten dollars on that. Ten dollars on that guy. Absolutely. Big buds. You got a few big buds in there, huh? Yes. Check it out. Yep. How about these guys? Twenty a piece. Nice. Nineteen seventies. Yeah, that's a good deal for those. Wow, you got a lot of big buds. Oh yeah. I, oh. A, I bought a collection from the biggest bud collector. He had the biggest collection in the country, so. Do you ever have you ever fished a big bud? Never have. I think I'm gonna have to go for this guy. Even though it's ten bucks, I gotta replace the skirt. Uh, that is uh, a goodie. The old red wing blackbird. This is like my first top water bait ever. So. Been at this for 35 years, brother. Really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Where are you based out of? Uh, Mentor, Ohio. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So look at this. You notice a little theme in my buying today, Absolutely. huh? Absolutely. Red wing blackbird, mouse. <laughs> Getting back yep. to the old... Tipsy, uh, some arbor gas. Did I miss any scenes, believe that are discontinued? I'm trying um, to think. I, oh, there I feel could like, be anything in there. I know. I feel like I tried to grab... Did you grab one of them? Oh, wait. I missed the mouse. Oh, hold on. I missed the mouse. Yep. That's so the mouse. that would be too hard to put a skirt on the no, back of that. No. Actually, though, right? I had skirts. I don't have them here, but I have brand new arbor gas skirts at home. I forgot to bring them. Um, yeah. How much for Mr. Mouse? Ten bucks. All right. Done deal. Yep. We're going to add the mouse. Look at this. 
All right, Bass and Buds, uh, we're gonna stop for a new little segment we do on the show called Bass and Bud of the Week. Just stepping out of the convention center here in Springfield, Illinois, and ran into Bass and Bud Sally, who stopped me and said that she likes to watch the old Retro Bass and Show. So, Sally, thank you. Congratulations thank you. for being the Retro Bass and Bass and Bud of the Week. Well, thank you very much. I'm <laughs> so, uh, did you buy any lures today? Yes. What was I the favorite lure you bought? It was a head and crackle back, 175. Okay. That I needed to add to my collection. That's my first 175. I've got What'd you spend on it? You don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. <laughs> and that's not not eight set eight dollars and seventy five cents. Was this your first NFL CC show? Yes, sir. Will it sure. be your last? No. Yeah, me either. If you guys have not joined the NFL CC, I definitely recommend on doing so. It is a blast of an organization. I had a heck of a time running around the convention center this week. If you want to submit your name for Bass and Bud of the Week honors, just go ahead and post the picture of yourself fishing old school with vintage rods, reels, lures, or equipment, or even retro bass and gear, go ahead and hashtag Fish It Old School as well as tag me at Retro Bassin. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.